Hey guys, Coach Sue and Coach Alex here with Physique Development. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another video. And today we are gonna be going over the single arm step back hammer strength row. And if you have one of these at your gym, we are so freaking excited for you. We absolutely love this piece and can't wait for you to nail down this exercise. Today, we're gonna to be going over how to bias the lats in this exercise, but we do have another video going over how to bias your upper back and rear delts in this exercise, so definitely go check that one out. So in order to bias our lats, let's go ahead and learn a little bit about the lats and where they're located. So I'm gonna have this super hot model turn around here. And when we look at the lat, it's gonna originate here on the spine, and then it's gonna fan up here and it's going to attach to the back of the upper arm. So I want you to keep that in mind as we get a little bit deeper into the video. But Alex can go ahead and turn back around and while he's doing so, go ahead and subscribe, share this video with a friend. We would really appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the setup here. I'm going to have Alex turn towards the machine and what I want him to do is to go ahead and take his opposite arm that he's working and place it against the chest pad. Now with this, we don't need it to be completely locked out and causing any kind of restraint friction, but you do want it to be very sturdy there and you want to make sure that your chest isn't turning with this or your hips. So with that, you also want to ensure that you're very much so bracing your core. Not only is the core going to be an antagonist to the back muscles, but it's going to also help us keep our spine neutral so we're not having any pain either. Then he's going to go ahead and take the foot of the same arm he's working and go ahead and have a staggered stance and stand forward here. The reason for this is again to limit the amount of rotation and if you do have the opposite leg forward it's much easier to open up so we want to have that same leg forward as you're going through the movement. Another thing within foot placement that you want to keep in mind is going to be how centralized you are to this piece because you'll see as you row that it is going to pull outwards a little bit and so we do want to make sure that we're not stepped all the way to the right or all the way to the left. We're in a great spot where again the middle of our opposite hip is lined up with the center of the machine and then you'll be in great positioning to go ahead and row. Now the only piece that's adjustable on this machine is going to be the bench. And so you can go ahead and adjust this bench to make sure it's right in your hip crease just for again, a little bit added support. So he's gonna go ahead and reach forward with that right arm. And you notice with the multiple grips on this machine, he's grabbing that neutral grip. And the reason for that goes back to talking about where the lat is going to attach here. And since it attaches on the back of the upper arm, we wanna ensure that we're keeping this upper arm close to our body so that we are biasing lats to the best of our ability. And as he's going through this row, he really wants to think about driving this upper arm and this shoulder down, as well as driving the elbow down and back. And he's gonna get to this really nice right angle. So that's what we're gonna be going for here. I'm gonna have him go through a few more reps so you can see. Now with him stepped back, one thing we have to be very aware of is where the resistance drops off. We want to keep that tension on the lats. And so if he steps back further, then he is going to go ahead and row and see that tension drop off. And then that resistance is no longer in line with the tissue. So it's something to be very aware of, of where that drop off is and making sure you're scooting close enough that that's not happening. Now you might be thinking, there's a seat here, why aren't we using it? So we are gonna go ahead and walk through that as well. So I'm gonna have Alex go ahead and put down the weight, but go ahead and sit on that seat. Now as he gets on this seat, regardless if he's doing single arm or both arms at the same time, he takes the same grip. What we see as he rows is we either see that there's too much trap elevation and shrugging here as he's going through the row, and or we also see far too much elbow flexion. So even if he is driving that elbow down, we see far too much elbow flexion, which again is taking the tension off the lats. Now he could move the seat up a little bit, but even if he were to stand and still keep that chest support, we see that there is still far too much elbow flexion to truly be getting the tension that we want on our lats. I wanna make a quick clarification that elbow flexion alone isn't necessarily the issue. It's that we do wanna think about driving that upper arm and that elbow down to keep the tension on the lat. So if we do have too much elbow flexion, it's not allowing us to go through that movement. You'll see that doing this with both arms at the same time is causing internal rotation at the shoulder, which is gonna make it very difficult to target the lat. 
By stepping back, we're also allowing the handles to be better aligned and leave that internal rotation to allow us to better target that lat. And there you have it. That is going to be the single arm stepped back hammer strength row with a lat bias. And if you're looking for other lat exercises or other back exercises, then definitely go check out our back playlist. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you next time.